changes at Utah Resorts, always announcing upgrades and things that, that have come along uh, with the budget in the off season. Parking always a focal point, yep. especially when you're talking about the Cottonwoods. So the conversation continues, whether the growth of the industry or people coming here, keeping up with demand. Today, both resorts in Big Cottonwood Canyon really putting it all out there that they will have reservations. There are now fees attached to those reservations. So just before we get into our discussion, here's what's expected to happen this season at Bright Resort. Brighton, we are moving to a full reservation policy. We should have that launched within the next week or so. What that means is there'll be a mix of uh, free parking that's included with your season pass and paid parking. And so uh, our, our the, the summary of it all is, you know, season pass holders included with their season pass, they get that parking is included. Uh, if you carpool to Brighton, that parking is free. If you just want to ride up on your own, then you have to pay a fee and that fee is $20. Does that include Icon Pass holders as a season pass, or is it strictly a Brighton Resort season pass? Strictly Brighton Resort season pass holders. But, you know, Icon Pass holders, hopefully they're they're savvy skiers and they understand a carpool and they got some friends and they can make that carpool reservation and go from there. Why the change? Uh, the demand. Like our parking lots over the last couple of years have been uh, overfilling. We've been having to turn too many people away. Uh, people are parking way down the canyon. It's just hopefully we can provide a better experience for our guests. What have some of the, I guess, safety hazards or dangers been like over the last couple of years with increased demand and people parking in places they shouldn't be? I mean, as somebody who's up there often, what does that look like when you go past some of these vehicles that are parking incorrectly? And what are the possible hazards? Uh, I, I think a lot of that happens more down the canyon. Uh, I I don't know if it's as much of a hazard as a frustration. Like if you're driving up the canyon and suddenly you realize, oh, I can't get past this car that's in the way, or there's so many cars in the canyon that I'm hoping that it's just a wreck or somebody's stuck, but really it's actually that the parking lots are full. It's not that somebody's just blocking the road. And so when you're waiting in your car for an hour to get up to something that should only take 20 minutes, and realize that the place is full and people are just sitting in their cars hoping that somebody leaves so they can get a spot. That's the frustration. And so we're hoping to eliminate that by encouraging people to make their reservations early. If we're out of reservations, we're going to be transparent, let them know parking's full like ahead of time. Reservations have been to a max. And so you plan to ski another day. So hopefully it's just enhances that experience all around. What does that capacity look like? It's a good question. Uh, our our capacity, like to a number on a good day, we can park maybe a thousand cars, eleven hundred cars on a really good day. But we're gonna start out not like selling a eleven hundred parking reservations. We're gonna you know start much lower, see how it goes, be comfortable, and work our way into uh, to the the process. You know, we know there's gonna be frustrations up front. People may not know that a reservation is gonna be needed. They're not gonna understand how it works, things like that. And so we'll do the best we can to get the word out, let them know with, you know, our social media, our emails, our website, all that stuff. But then when they get here, we're going to work with people and try to make sure that they know for the next time they come to visit. Did you look to other resorts to see what they were doing though, to kind of influence this decision or was it really on your own, just seeing the the need? A hundred percent. I looked at everything, looked at how it worked for other resorts, other canyons, other states. And you know, trying to help out our partners in this canyon, you know, UDOT, Forest Service, there's there's something that needs to be changed, you know, and hopefully us charging and requiring a reservation will cause less people, less traffic in the canyon, and it won't be as much of a UDOT problem or a Forest Service problem, and they won't be like trying to toll the canyon or any of these other things. And so we have a solution that we've thought of. I know that they're working on their things, and hopefully it'll just be a better experience for everybody this winter. All right, let's head down Canyon a little bit. Just next door at Solitude Mountain Resort. Some changes of their own. Solitude announcing today they will require mandatory reservations before 11 a.m. on weekends. They call that Friday through Sunday and holiday periods, December 15th through April 14th. It'll cost $35 to park to be paid in advance per vehicle, unless you have four or more people in your car, which it then will be free. So they're really encouraging the carpool aspect, right? So I told you it's till 11. Between 11 and 1 on those days, parking will be available based on spots available. So you can show up and hope. Same pay structure. After 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 
Parking is free. No reservations required. You follow me? Here's a lot of information. Cars with four or more will park for free every day with a parking reservation. That is Monday through Sunday. So I told you about the weekends. How about Monday through Thursday? A space available parking system will be in place before one o'clock. So you show up, you don't have to do the reservation. You, you can get your spot. It'll cost you 20 bucks a vehicle for everyone less than four passengers and that'll be paid on 